welcome back to another Loki Tech Tips. For today, we got something new for the Office Network, a network attached storage or NAS for short. So basically, this is a high capacity storage unit that you install in the network which the computers and servers use as a shared storage device. This particular NAS can also be accessed by means of port forwarding, but that will be for another video. This is Synology's DS1821 Plus NAS. This runs on AMD Ryzen 2.2GHz and out of the box, it includes a 4GB RAM which is expandable to 32. I will add another 16GB of RAM which will give me a total of 20 for better performance. The bottom panel covers the RAM slots so I have to flip this guy belly side up to add the RAM. Next step is putting in all the hard drives in the base. I'm using Seagate's 4TB IronWolf NAS hard drives which are designed for NAS units. Now each of these hard drive bay frames comes with these toolless plastic tabs which you insert on the hard drive's screw holes. Then you can insert the frame back in its place. I'm populating all base with 8 4 terabytes, which will give me about 25 plus terabytes of usable storage capacity. For all of those who are thinking 4 times 8 isn't 25 plus, I'll have to show you the math later. The bay frames can also house both 2.5 and 3.5 inch hard drives, as well as solid state drive variants such as SATA and M.2s though M.2s go to a different slot. And after setting up the NAS, it's time to integrate it to our network. I'm gonna place the NAS at the lowest part of our server rack. And as you can see, I plugged in both of our patch cables as a redundancy if one Ethernet port or a patch cable fails. Then plug them to our switch or router and then press the power button. The power button light will blink as it boots, then it will become steady as well as the hard drive bay lights. Time to configure the NAS itself. Firstly, go to Synology.com and search for the correct NAS model, the most recent OS version for it, and then click on the desktop utilities to download Synology Assistant. Install it and make sure that you allow the program to pass through your firewall. Run it and click on search. The Synology Assistant will detect two IPs for your NAS because you use two of its LAN ports. Click on either one and then click on connect. Tick the box and then click OK. The program will prompt you to start the setup configuration. If you haven't downloaded the latest DSM for your NAS, you can download it from the link provided on the page. Basically, it will install the Disk Station Manager into your unit. It's like its operating system. It will take around 10 to 15 minutes to finish the installation. In the event that the program loses its connection to the NAS, click on Search Manually. So the reason why the NAS got disconnected was because it changed its IP. That's okay, just click on connect and set up your administrative credentials. I selected the recommended update option, but I did not tick on the device analytics. The setup will push you all the way to creating your storage pool and as recommended, I'm choosing RAID 5 setup. A big thanks to PowerSort Animation Videos for explaining the difference between NAS and SAN. 
as well as differences between RAID setups. I've also checked other TechTube channels such as Linus's and Think Media regarding NAS and RAID setups. All video links are in the description. Select all the hard drives you want to include in the RAID 5 storage pool setup. For me, it's all of it. And as you can see, it will give you the estimated storage capacity. Click on next. Select the maximum allocated size and choose the recommended file system. Confirm all the settings that you've done, click apply, and then click OK. It will format and set up all your hard drives to RAID 5 configuration. Then after the configuration, the Disk Station Manager will redirect you to the dashboard where it will show you all your NAS settings and hard drive health. Okay, time for the math. 4 terabyte hard drives will give you 3.6 terabytes of usable storage. Multiply that by 8 drives, it will give you only about 28.8 terabytes instead of 32. And a RAID 5 setup uses a whole hard drive's capacity to store parity for its fault tolerance. So 28.8 minus 3.6 terabytes is equal to 25.2 terabytes of usable storage. Yeah, it says 25.4 but you get the gist. You'll find the ITDEP Synology drive within your network but there's nothing there and you can create any folder. You have to go to DSM's control panel, shared folder under file sharing category, then click on create to create a shared folder. Name it whatever you want, set up a password so only selected few can access it, then you are good to go. The Disk Manager dashboard is accessible by running your Synology NAS's IP address on an internet browser, or you can just bookmark it on your Chrome. And that is it for today. If you have any questions or clarifications, please comment them down below. And hey, if you're new here, I do tech videos and cooking vlogs. And if you can hit like and subscribe button, that will be really helpful. And as always, see you again next time.